Hi everyone, today I'm going to discuss about the chemistry of life. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the properties of water. So today you're going to learn about what actually is water, what are some of the unique properties of water, and why water is some actually pretty amazing stuff compared to some other elements and some other compounds on this planet. So the question is, why in biology are we actually studying water? Well, as you know, over 75% of the Earth is actually covered in water, and most of our bodies are water. Cells themselves are about 70 to 95 percent water. So it's important when you're understanding life is that you understand that water is the molecule that actually supports all life. And everything that occurs for life must occur in water. So what is wa why is water such an important molecule? Water is known as a polar molecule. So think about poles. We have a north pole, we have a south pole. All poles mean is that it has two opposite ends. So water is polar, meaning it has an unequal distribution of charges. An unequal distribution of charges means that on one side it's positive, and on the other side that it's negative. So that's what it means when water is a polar molecule. It just means it has a positive end and negative end. And you can clearly see in the picture that the hydrogen ions, the H's are positively charged, and the oxygen is negatively charged. Oxygen is a big fatty, it loves electrons, so it hogs all the electrons, so that's why it has a negative charge. The hydrogens are weaker, so they can't really fight for the electrons, so they are positively charged. So what actually happens when water molecules get close together? It, they actually stick. The reason why they stick is just like how two magnets stick. So the positive end of the water molecule, or the hydrogen atom, actually is attracted to the hydrogen, the, sorry, the oxygen atom on the other molecule. So the water actually likes to stick together just like two magnets because opposites attract. This actual bond is known as a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonds hold water molecules together. And the key fact about hydrogen bonds is everything that deals with water can be attributed to hydrogen bonding. So the reason why water has all the unique properties that we're about to go over is because of hydrogen bonding. So polarity and hydrogen bonding are the two key concepts that give water all of its unique properties. So because of this hydrogen bonding, this ability to hydrogen bond, it creates a sticky molecule, which is why in a glass, water is all stuck together. When you pour it out, you don't have individual water molecules coming out. You actually have all the water molecules coming out stuck together in a big long chain. Due to hydrogen bonding and polarity, there are four special properties of water that you need to know. You have cohesion and adhesion. Water is, being, is a good solvent. Water is actually has a lower density as a solid. And water has a high specific heat. So we'll actually go through each of them and talk about what they actually mean. So the first one is cohesion. So cohesion refers to the bonding of water molecules to neighboring water molecules. So cohesion is water sticking to water. Cohesion causes surface tension. Surface tension is something that you've been familiar with. It's that skin of the water, so it's the reason why insects can walk on water, like the water strider in the bottom of the slide. It's also why you can form water droplets on wax paper and pennies is because surface tension are those water molecules that are actually sticking to themselves and creating that skin. Adhesion is when water actually hydrogen bonds to other substances. So cohesion is water to water. Adhesion is water to other substances. So it could be water to your skin as you're getting out of the shower. That's why you have to rub vigorously with your towel to get it off you. It could be water sticking to meniscus or sticking to the um, cylinder when you're measuring liquids, creating that meniscus. Like over here, you can see that the water is actually sticking to the glass on the either side. Adhesion leads to something known as capillary action. So capillary action is when water can actually climb up tubes without any force. So you see that with paper towels, you see that with cloth. When you put a paper towel on a spill, you see that the water moves and spreads out through the cloth or through the paper towel. That's due to adhesion. It's sticking to the paper towel and actually spreading out. This thing down here is known as a capillary tube. All you do is you, it's a small little glass tube. You put it in the liquid and the liquid actually climbs up the tube 
without any other force, without any sucking, without any pressure. It just automatically climbs up the tube. And you can see a much larger version over here. The second property of water you need to know is that water is a good solvent. So a solvent means that it can dissolve lots of things. So the polar molecules can actually surround atoms like salt, NaCl, sodium chloride table salt. And that's why a rock, sodium rock, can actually dissolve in water. That's why when you put salt in water, it dissolves, is it is actually breaking apart the rock into these individual ions that are being separated and dissolved. And you see in protein, it doesn't do it as well because protein is much larger. So there's three different vocab terms with solutions. You have solvents, which are the liquid. They dissolve solutes, which is the substance getting dissolved, and that creates a solution. So water is a solvent. It dissolves lots of things. It dissolves solutes, and the mixture of the two is a solution. So what actually dissolves in water? Things that dissolve in water are known as hydrophilic. Hydro meaning water, philic means lover. So if you're hydrophilic, you're attracted to water, so you like water. So the rule is like dissolves like. So if you're hydrophilic, you are polar. So polar molecules are hydrophilic, water is polar, polar dissolves polar. So what doesn't dissolve in water? Well, if you're hydrophilic, you like water and you're polar and dissolve. If you're hydrophobic, phobia meaning fear. If you're arachnophobic, you hate spiders. So hydrophobic means that you don't like water and you're not attracted to it, so you won't dissolve. And we should all know a few examples of things that are hydrophobic, butter, oil, all those things that don't mix well with water, those are hydrophobic substances. So hydrophobic is nonpolar. So hydrophilic is polar, it dissolves in water. Hydrophobic is not polar, it is nonpolar, so it does not like water, so they will not mix together. The third property of water is the special case of ice. So most substances are actually more dense when they're solid. If you take a gold brick and put it in liquid gold, it will sink. But if you take solid ice and you put it in liquid water, it floats. So what actually happens is that water becomes less dense when it freezes. So that's why you can't put soda cans in the freezer because they'll shatter, they'll pop open because they actually will expand. So that's why you can't fill your water bottle all the way when you freeze it, you have to leave some room for that expansion. This less dense causes ice to actually float, which should not be a surprise to anyone watching this video. You're all high school students. The last property of water that you need to know is high specific heat. Specifically, what is specific heat? So the science jargon is it is defined as the amount of heat that must be absorbed or lost for one gram of that substance to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. That is a lot of mumbo jumbo. What does it actually mean? It actually means that if you have a high specific heat, you do not like to change temperature. You resist changes in temperature. So it takes a lot of energy to heat it up and it takes a lot to cool it down. That's why they always say a watch pot never boils. It takes a long time to heat up a boiling pot of water than it does to heat up oil. Same thing, the opposite is true. Once it's hot, it stays hot for a long time. So that's why you can't just take it off the stove for a few minutes and stick your hand in it. It's still hot because water holds temperature very well. Which is just what I said. And this is key fact, actually. So water doesn't actually change temperature that much. It stays within a very narrow range, which is great for your body because your body needs a certain temperature, 98.6 degrees. Because of the amount of water in your body, when you go outside when it's 100 degrees out, you don't heat up. When you go outside when it's 60 degrees out, you don't cool down and die. Thank you for watching and hopefully you got some good notes down. Uh, please make sure to bring any questions and your notes to class. See you later.